Welcome back to my series on getting started with the X-Carve. In this video, I'm going to cover the process I take in creating one of my first projects on the machine. For this project, we are going to be designing a sign in the shape of Texas with the U.S. flag cut into the state. I start the design process in Adobe Illustrator to get the basic shape laid out. To start, I found a free vector image of the state of Texas and of the U.S. flag. I bring these into Illustrator and then center them using the Align panel. Next, I scale the U.S. flag to be larger than the outline of Texas, and then I rotate it until it looks good to me. One thing I made sure to watch out for is that I didn't position the flag such that small remnants of the image aren't left in the relief cut, as the bit can't really cut these out. Next, I use the Crop tool in the Pathfinder tab to crop only the portions of the U.S. flag that are inside the state outline. After this, I remove all of the white portions of the design, as I don't want these cut out. There were actually two stripes in the design that, actually, that didn't connect to the star section. So I connected these by just extending the path. The last step is to duplicate the state outline and use the offset path tool to enlarge the outline of the, the design. This tool can be found in the edit path submenu. Lastly, we save our design as an AI to preserve the source file for any later changes we might want to make and then save another copy as an SVG for use in Easel. With the design complete, it's time to prepare the workpiece. I start by looking through my scrap pile of walnut for two one foot long sections that are at least four inches wide by one and a half inches thick, as I will be resawing these down to create a one foot by one foot panel. Up next, I take these pieces to the bandsaw to resaw them both. The next step is to plane each of the resawn boards down to a uniform thickness. The actual thickness doesn't matter here as we will be planing the final panel down to an exact amount. With the boards prepared, it's time to glue them up. I make sure to place a clamp on top of the boards to try and keep them from bowing up too much.
Once the glue is dried, we remove the clamps and use a chisel to remove any squeeze out from the bottom of the panel. We then run the panel through the planer again to get it down to approximately half an inch. Once this is complete, I measure the final workpiece for use in easel, making sure to get an exact thickness using calipers. Up next, I set up the project in easel. The first step is to input the size and type of the workpiece. One note here is to set your workpiece depth a slight bit deeper than the actual workpiece so that it cuts all the way through. We counter this by placing a sacrificial piece of plywood underneath so we don't cut into our wasteboard. After this, I import the SVG created in Illustrator into Easel. I like to offset the artwork from the bottom left corner a few pixels to account for any miscalculation in the workpiece size or the homing of the spindle. Then scale the artwork to fill the area minus the size padding on top and right sides. I then select only the outline of the artwork and select the outside outline setting. I then like to move the tabs to the straightest and most accessible areas so that it makes it easy to cut out when you're finished with the project. Next I select everything and then deselect the outline and set the depth of cut for the inner cut of the US flag. Lastly, I enlarge the preview to check and make sure everything looks okay, and then go through the carb checklist. Before starting the actual carb, you want to make sure your piece is secured with clamps. A couple of notes here. First of all, uh, make sure none of your clamps are near your homing point. Don't ask me how I know this, but you can't guarantee when the cut is starting or finishing that the spindle won't cut through your clamps. Secondly, make sure your workpiece is actually secured. I had it come loose one time and it's not a pretty sight, trust me. With the workpiece secured, we can start the car. Unfortunately, as you will see here, I learned my first lesson on this project. When cutting with a 1 8 inch bit, the small detail cuts chipped out pretty heavily. After a bit of research, I found that I wanted to use both a roughing cut to get the general shape and hog out most of the material, and a detail cut to finish all of the lines and create a clean surface. With this lesson learned, I went back into easel and using the plus icon you see here, added a secondary bit to enable a detailed pass. I used a 1 8 inch bit for the roughing pass and a 1 16 inch upcut bit for the detail pass. I figured taking such a deep cut wasn't helping me either, so I ended up lowering the depth of the cut to 3 16 of an inch. You can see when I preview the carve, it actually splits the cut up into two separate jobs. Off camera, I resawed and glued up another board and started the carve again. I run the entire carve here so you can see the difference between the two cuts.
If you're following along, here's where we're starting the detail cut. You'll see it clean up the edges quite a bit. With the carve finished, I hand sand down any rough edges. This will get rid of any of the burrs left over from the carve. I wanted to test a finish I had seen online where the inner cuts are painted white and the flat areas are sanded away. I taped the edges of the piece and spray painted the top white. Once the paint dried and the tape was removed, I was able to use my random orbital sander to sand the top clean of any paint to reveal the raw walnut. Once all the paint is removed, I applied a few coats of wipe on poly to finish to the top, back, and edges of the piece. All right, so that's going to wrap this project up. Um, a couple things that I learned here. Number one, um, that you should be doing uh, whenever you're doing more detailed cuts like this, you should be doing a roughing and a detail pass using a smaller bit. I first tried it with an eighth inch bit just to do the entire thing. As you saw in the, the footage, uh, that turned out that didn't turn out well at all. Uh, using that sixteenth inch upcut bit uh, for the final pass actually helped out quite a bit. With that said, the 16th inch bit, for some reason, I still can't figure out why, I actually cut a little bit deeper uh, than the 8th inch bit in the roughing pass itself. I'm not sure why that happened. I ran the Z-Probe a second time before starting the detail pass. Um, so I'm thinking it's either something along the lines of the work area itself is not flattened, or the piece itself uh, that I was using uh, wasn't exactly, maybe it had a bow in it or something like that. Uh, if you have any information on that, um, please let me know in the comments below. Maybe some of the more expert users of the X-Car or Easel itself can help me out there. Um, but I'm going to run a couple more tests uh, with a very simple cut just to see exactly uh, if the same thing happens with a different piece of wood. Uh, and if that happens, I might just start researching uh, flattening my actual work area itself. Uh, with that said, uh, I think that's going to wrap up this series. Uh, I'm going to have a couple more videos a little bit later on, mostly um, around creating a storage area for the X-Car itself. Um, as you can see here, uh, it takes up the majority of my workbench, uh, and I really want to free that area up so I can start on some other projects. Uh, I have a couple more things, a couple upgrades to my table saw to do, uh, a couple jigs I need to create. I'm probably going to create uh, shoot videos for that here. Uh, in the near future, so you'll see those coming on my channel. Um, I'm hoping to make this not all entirely about the x and about CNC. Uh, you know, it's going to be just general woodworking projects as a whole. Um, but with that, I just want to thank you for tuning into this series. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, ways I can improve, suggestions for future projects with the x itself, I'd really appreciate them in, comments, in the comments below. Uh, but with that, I just want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. Uh, otherwise, that'll be it. Thanks.